Howdy y'all, Bearded Carpenter here. I'm out here at the smokehouse. I've been doing some work on it and I'm getting ready to chink it. And I wanted to show you what I do to uh, prep the logs for chinking. And there's, there's some things I'm going to point out. As you can see here, I have the wire in on uh, one side, all the gaps, all the way down to the bottom. And they're not all the same size. So, uh, I cut that wire, I just kind of measure whatever the widest place in the chinking gap is and rip my wire, my hardware cloth wire, that, that width. I wanted to explain to you a little bit about why I'm using hardware cloth. What I've always done is to drive nails in the upper log and the lower log about every five inches or so and then drive one in between uh, on the lower log and bend them in and that holds your chinking when you start putting it in there there is no driving nails into this seasoned oak and if you opt to use nails check out jared at uh, flutie lick homestead he and his wife bought an old log house a few years ago and they moved it and set it back up put it back together and he he did the nail system and he has a good video on that and showing you how he did it and I'm sure it worked well for him and that's what I've always done. Okay, I have my wire cut and I'm going to staple this in on the upper side. I'm using a little small pneumatic staple gun up there on the underneath side I'm using a little half inch staple. Seems to be holding well. And I've held this in about an inch from the face of the log. Um, when you're chinking and you're running a trowel down through there, you know, smoothing it out, you don't want to hit that wire. Now, after I get it shot in underneath on the, the upper log, I just kind of start bending it in with my hands down through there. Just take my hammer. Tap that in a little bit. And then I've got a, uh, actually it's just a masonry chisel, not a real expensive one. You see it's got a taper on it. And I'm just coming back and just tapping this in. that'll crease that to where I can staple that on the bottom log. Then I just kind of bend up the waist of what's sticking down below. Again, I'm using a chisel. Kind of protect my hand from the wire. And I can kind of tap that back a little bit there. I'm doing the outside first. I'll come back in on the inside. And before I put the, the uh, hardware cloth on the inside I'll put insulation in between the chinking gap here and let it come out against this and as I push the chinking in it will squeeze that back a little bit and let me have a good thick uh, depth on my, my chinking on the outside and then I'll do the same thing on the inside with the wire mesh. I'm getting ready to close in these gables. I've got some oak boards there little over nine inches wide that I've had sawed for a long time. But I'm starting out about two inches down from the top edge of this half log, which is even with the top of the plate logs. And I came down two inches and I snapped a white line. Uh, this will give me a reference at the bottom to be able to cut the bottom edges of the, of the boards so that, so that they're all running straight and even across the bottom. And after I did that, the first thing that I'll do 
is to plumb down from the peak of the rafters and I want to make a little bitty mark right there and right there if you can see that you may have seen this kicker here up underneath this rafter uh, this is kind of a temporary thing uh, this rafter sagged just a little bit for some unknown reason and I put this kicker on here I've got a couple screws into the rafter and a couple down into the, this half log and then I, I ran some screws and a block of wood here down into this and I put the screws in at an angle like this so that when I drove some wedges in here it would this wouldn't slide back and I drove some wedges in the bottom of this to keep it where I wanted it to push this back up just a little bit now when I get my boards on here that will tie this rafter to this half log and I have a, a pretty good sized wedge right directly across from where my finger is uh, coming down in between the, the chinking gap on the inside and that will keep this secure so when I actually kick that rafter up it's not going to go anywhere this roof is a 612 and I'm going to show you how to come up with the angle where there would be a plumb cut or a cut that's going on a board that's going vertically which is what I'll be doing or if you were cutting a rafter peak this is how you would actually get the uh, the, the mark the angle mark on your board now this is just a one before that I'm using but I put on the short leg of the square I put the six on the edge of the board and the long leg of the square I put on 12 and so that gives you the angle of the roof or the pitch of the roof and if you were cutting rafters you would use this same angle Thank you. 